Hello there, um, in the vise today we've got a Napec G size 12 hook and I'm going to tie for you what I call the upside down fly uh, but I think it's actually called a polythetis but I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation so I'll stick with the UDF um, First thing I'm going to do is prepare my bead I'm just using some quite heavy sea fishing nylon here and I'm going to use a 2.5mm bead I'll just thread that on, this one's black and all we've got to do is with a lighter melt the end as it's cooling just give it a couple of taps give it a couple of seconds just to cool down and set then your bead should slip up inside like so put that to the side for the moment the thread I'm going to use today is a uni thread. It's tan and it's in the A topped. So let's make a start. We'll get a few wraps on. Like so. Get rid of our pig's tail. I'll just come back a bit. And I'm going to come back up the shank. Uh, about a good eighth of an inch back from the where I want to tie in my bead. Now the next thing is to secure the bead. Now I find that if I address the bead to the eye of the hook and catch it in about there, that gives me enough space to turn it up. Now I'm only using eight odd thread, so I've got to be very careful here to get the right amount of wraps in. I'm going to use some uh, old snips and I'm going to cut this at an angle like so and then I'm going to bring it all back catching it all in just make sure that's there now I can bend this up upwards now I'm going to build a small step just where I put the nylon. I've seen Davy McPhail's video where he uses this technique and I thought it was very clever. Um, so I've given it a go and this is my version. So I've come back, we've got a bead sitting in the right position. Don't worry that it's dropped down, we're going to um, bulk that up later. And we're going to use a couple of ribs here. The first one is a brass rib, so I'll catch that in, run it up to about where the nylon ends. I'm just going to keep it out of the way because I forgot to tie in my tail. For the tail feathers, I'm just going to use a natural partridge, it's a banded feather, and you get a real nice tail. Quite a generous pinch. It's not a small delicate fly this. Um, it's designed to fish along the bottom for the grayling. Once I've caught that in, I can come in with my snips. Like so. And I'm just going to catch that all in. Then next comes a little bit of clear rib, a uh, clear wrap sorry. Uh, it's a great material this, I've really started to use it quite a lot in all my flies uh, for the rivers and the reservoirs. It's, it's not caught in, that's what it is. Um, it's just really versatile. Once I've caught that in, I'm going to come back to my tail, make sure it rings even Stevens. Now what I'm going to do with the clear wrap today is use uh, the Ruby Pro Marker pen uh, and just decide that it's going to go up dubbing wise. I'm just going to colour that. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, it does make a big difference to the fly. 
as I'm sure the photograph shows. So I'm going to just catch all that. And the dubbing I'm using is a Davy Wooten SLF, and this is the dark brown. And looks kind of gingery to me, but what do I know about colours? So I'll dub it up and address it up to the hook. It's not too tightly dubbed on. And what I'm going to do is dub all the way up the body. As you can see, I've not used enough. But I'd rather um, add some than have too much and have the hassle of undubbing it. So I'll just add that on. And again, a little bit more. Now, as I get up to the end, that's just ideal for what I want. I'm going to need a bit more of that dubbing, but not just yet. I'm just going to pick away some of the unwanted longer threads. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring up my clear wrap rib and I'm going to bring that towards me. Fairly tight then, as I get up to my bead, a couple of thread wraps to hold that in place. And then come in with my snips, take away the excess. Now this time the wire rib is going to come up in the opposite direction, away from me. And all this does, because it's a fly that's meant to bounce along the bottom, it just offers the rib, the clear rib, a little bit of protection. Okay, got that in place now. I'm going to hold that in and then I can twist my, my wire away. Now the next thing then is to add the hackle feather which I've left over on the other bench. So excuse me for a moment. <coughs> I'm going to use a, a grizzle hackle to find a suitable feather. And I should have done this prior to setting this whole thing up, but never mind, we're here now. Uh, I don't need it to be this wide, so I'm going to take this feather from about there and just strip back a little bit. Now, I know a lot of tyres leave this and then tie it on. I like to just get rid of the rubbish first. And I'm going to just... Tie it in just on the edge of the bead there. A little bit more of our SLF dub, don't need much. But the idea of the dub this time is to come around the bead, holding it up, and then well, my very last turn, I want to be my thread to be this side of the bead. Yeah, and there's a good reason for that, which I'll explain in a second. So I'm going to bring my hackle round now. Doesn't need many turns, just a few, and I'm then going to, while still holding my hackle. I'm going to bring my thread round a couple of turns just to hold that in place. I'm going to just hold my feather up so that's definitely held in place, and then I should be able to just pop that away. 
and I'm going to finish the fly on the top. Now I've tried, believe me, I've tried to use a whip finish tool to do this uh, and it's just not worked for me so I've resorted to doing what I've always done and I'm just using a couple of half hitches. Once that's done, trim away your thread You can come in with your dubbing needle and just add a bit of varnish near the post. And there you have the upside down fly. Thanks very much for watching.